Billy Jones was spawned out from the war in Worcester, Mass. Just another factory brat from the wannabe middle class. He learned to read before he outgrew his first cowboy hat. His mother read him funny books out loud, and that was that. He fell into the reeky Blackstone where the crazy skated. The nurse who hosed him down said, you've just been inoculated. He cried, but just the first time when he never could fit in. He knew they all could see the nerves and muscles through his skin. The rage boiled up like steam and Billy could not make it clearer. He said, my favorite view of Worcester's in the rear view mirror, Billy Jones. Boy, you've got no home. San Francisco spun his head around from hate to love, so he went back to Worcester once to give the kids a shove. Grounded down on Congress Alley, evangelical, pressed him with a mess that proved to be indelible. Judy Moon cooked up a spoon, a teenage junkie died. Bill rolled down his sleeves and thought he'd rather run than hide. The sergeant let him walk away from the fringes of a deal. And he left town so fast he burned the rubber on his heel. Billy Jones, better not go home. When friends from Worcester sneaked away and slipped out to the coast, he sheltered them like refugees who'd just escaped a ghost. They said, Worcester doesn't know the gaseous from the solids. Bill said, Worcester's what I spit out when I'm eating olives got smug about the quakes that scared them off from California. When people said, I'd come there, but he'd say, I tried to warn you. Billy Jones, better not go home. Billy loved the world, and the world loved Billy too. With his Worcester wits, there wasn't much he couldn't do. He learned to dance with all the world, but never left his feet. Could talk like William F. Buckley, or gear it back down to Shoesby Street. He dealt in music, stuff and nonsense, jewelry and jive, universities and jails. He fanned the spark alive, architect and engineer and always on the go. Lectures in Toronto, seminars in Tokyo. Billy Jones, why on earth go home? Then Billy's father died with kind inevitability, unless the son dies first, and that would be a tragedy. So Billy shook off adolescence, bought a suit, and flew, laid his daddy down in Worcester dirt like good sons do. He walked the memory dripping streets, a ghost among the ghosts, until he was invited to a jam thing by the hosts. He would have ducked him, but just then he couldn't make decisions. He found a backyard swarming with a mess of good musicians. Lots of folkies, lots of fogies. Some were both the same. Kids and mamas, Yokohamas, real-time ping-pong game. Young folks softly spoke of Congress Alley, wistfully. Ancient relics told the stories, contradictory. Japanese exchange students blowing like stacks volt, honking on the saxophones. And the red-headed woodpecker diddy boppin' blues mama flabbergasted Billy Jones. Billy Jones! Oh no, you can't go home. Then Mary Lou, the queen of cheer, popped up before you know it and said, I think you're Billy Jones, the drunken teenage poet. I guess that's who I was, but I don't think so anymore. I, I filled up that ambition by the time I hit the door. But why would you remember some weird punk you knew in school? <laughs> weird, you bet, but everybody thought that you were cool. <laughs> I wish they'd told me then, said Billy Jones, and had to chuckle. Mary Lou laughed and hugged him hard, and his knees began to buckle. Everybody here is weird, she said, down to their bones. Way too weird to ever dare to dream of throwing stones. There's an academic steam fitter, show farm horse trainer, pre-med Persian Jew. People come to Worcester now on purpose. No, it's true. <laughs> German igloo sculptor, Loopy Larry, Lazy Red, that poet with the wolf howl clawed the eyes out of his head. Afro Nipmuc, genius, dumb fuck, Syrian Afro Greek. Antique funk freak playing hide and seek with a geek. Now that's unique. Ben keeps bees and Bell trains fleas and Deb cleans the chimney flue. Tex-Mex soul painter, greeny white witch saint, a luthier, and me and you. Bill said, 
Looks like Worcester's pulled itself up from the slime. She punched his arm and said, I like it better all the time. Well, I've been in duller crowds in London, Amsterdam, and Rome. So who messed up the roots of my old sweet unhappy home? Well, maybe, baby, maybe Worcester always had the goods. You left so young, you only knew the beatniks and the hoods. Then Mary Lou, the queen of cheer, gave up a wink and grin. Ain't it funny, Billy Jones, the way you fit right in? Mr. Bluster, ain't it funny how you fit right in? Billy Jones, you think you can't go home? Billy Jones, baby, welcome home. Thank you. I am humbled, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> that was great. So, I, I wrote that a little while ago when I had uh, reconnected with Phil Nigro. And Phil said, hey man, let's, let's write a song like we, like we used to do like uh, 50 years ago. I said, okay, what, what are we writing about? He said, well, write one about Billy Joe, uh, who, who is now William Joseph. A of ours who ran away about the same time. I said, okay. He said, but we, we call it Ode to Billy Joe. No way, that's been used. Well, well, change. Oh, to Billy Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I sat down, I started writing about Billy Joe, and then pretty soon it was kind of about me, and then it was about a bunch of people, and then it was about, like, everybody. And, and so I finally finished it, and I, I sent Phil the, the lyrics. And he got back to me, and he said, hey, I said, I said a song, not a five-act play. <laughs> Did that sound like Phil? 